Good morning, and welcome to our Ash Wednesday prayer service. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the holy season of Lent. Lent is a time of fasting and sacrificing. This year, however, it seems like we've been going through this Lenten sacrifice since last March. The symbol of ashes is a deep symbol. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we're reminded that we come from dust and to dust we will return. What's important in life is how we spend that time between the dust. When we're faced with being asked to make sacrifices, as you enter this Lenten season, ask yourself, is this the season you will choose to rise from the ashes? And so we begin our prayer service in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Well, greetings to one and all. Uh, I'm very honored to be able to lead in prayer the, uh, each of our schools. So St. Anne's, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and St. Francis, all of whom will be sharing in this video. So needless to say, it's, uh, when I talk, I'm going to have to be careful. There's like a 14 year age span there. So we've got to, we've got to include everyone. Remember that. And so uh, here I am at our beautiful Church of Star of the Sea. It's the church that's, that uh, is, uh, is belonging to many of you. And let us begin now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. With your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Who knows whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
wash me more and more from my guilt and my sorrow and cleanse me from all of my sin. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. <clears throat> my offenses truly Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold now is the very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, uh, as you can see, uh, Mr. McGuire came up with this fantastic idea because at the time of the taping, the, uh, the snow is really piling up out there and many of us cannot get around. And of course, you're at home uh, when we're recording this. So uh, we have had, as you know, a number of challenges over the past year and um, probably will continue to do so um, at least for a few more months. Um, they have caused us to make a number of adjustments, maybe to test our creativity. Thankfully, we have, the we have a, a fair bit of technology here and we are able to 
um, maybe well reach out and do the do a better job than we could have before before all of this was invented and available to us. Now these challenges and struggles, they um, I know that they've been very troubling for some. They've been particularly well. It, what could start off as an annoyance becomes or could become something that is downright well unbearable. Uh, people's there are things when they get too, when things, routines get too much upset, there are a lot of people that really have, uh, find that unnerving and have difficulty with that. Well, of course, uh, our faith assures us that God is with us through thick and thin. And in the long history of Christianity, so over 2,000 years now, uh, the, the adherence to this faith and the saints in particular, because we know about their lives, much better because they're recorded, they had every bit of struggle that we do and at times more. It wasn't that once they decided to follow the Lord and put their hand to the plow, it was easy street. No, that wasn't it at all. And if they thought it was supposed to be like that, they would have turned back. They would have no longer gone with the Lord. No, he allows everything that everybody experiences, he allows the disciple to experience this as well. However, the, the disciple uh, keeping the Lord's presence ever in mind and keeping an awareness of God has a, has, a, has a decided advantage because this individual then never loses heart. They may get a little bit discouraged at times, yes, but they never lose heart. They never actually become despondent. I've been reading more about, uh, uh, what's his, his Father Damien from Molokai. Now think about, here's somebody who would really interest you now because he spent, mm, I guess, 17 years of his life until his death at the age of 49 in one of the islands in, in Hawaii. Damien was there because of the leprosy problem. He volunteered to be there to minister to, to the people. And he knew that it would probably cost him his life. He had all kinds of opposition, both from some church officials, believe it or not, and from the current government of Hawaii. They had a monarchy at the time with a prime minister. And, um, oh my goodness, it was incredible all the things that he went through. He even had to, in, uh, to he had to scale a, a mountain which was almost perpendicular in order to gain access to others that he needed to minister to. His hands all cut from the volcanic rock and uh, nothing deterred him from his mission. Why? Because he knew the Lord had sent him and he knew that God would complete the good work that God had begun. So why am I telling you all of this? Because uh, in order for us to have this disposition uh, or for the smaller children, I suppose, in order for us to have an attitude that God is always with us, well, we have to prepare ourselves. We have to nurture that. How do we do it? Well, Lent is a perfect way to really get more immersed in that. So first of all, so think of the three traditional observances or disciplines in Lent. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Prayer. I, I'll ask young people when, when they come to confession, well, are you praying? Oh, no, not really. No. And I say, do you think the Lord went through all the trouble of creating you and he, and he never hears from you? I mean, you, oh, I'm too busy. Well, then as Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta had said, if you're too busy for God, you are too busy because he's the reason for all of this and he's the place, the destination for each of us. So, so a little bit of time in the morning, at night. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Even if it's not, you don't expect it to be a pleasant one. Uh, Lord Jesus, be with me. Lord, I thank you for, as you go to get ready to go to sleep, you're feeling tired and relaxed. I thank you and, and th grant me a good night's sleep. And if I have any mistakes or sins that I've done, help me to do better tomorrow. Fasting. Well, Again, nobody uh, will remember where uh, the Muslim faith during Ramadan calls for a very rigorous fast. Catholicism doesn't call for that uh, unless you really wanted to do that. But it calls for something that um, giving up of something that uh, of a food or entertainment nature that you've been falling back on. 
we're, we're people of habit, okay? And uh, if we, we like to distract ourselves, which is often healthy, but that could be, we could be going overboard with that. There are things to deal with in this life. Are we afraid to deal with them? Would it be better to have a drink or other substances? Would it be better to, uh, you know, to keep on burying my sorrows in food, chocolate, this kind of a thing? All, um, there's people who cannot go for five minutes without something electronic to latch on to. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Well, your students, some of you have a part-time job, but especially during this time, you know, that might, maybe not so much. Again, nobody's expecting you to hand over all of your savings for education and anything else, you know, so that you can't do anything. But is there not a small portion? You see, if we begin small, however small, Jesus proved that when the widow put in a mite, it was like two cents worth. Jesus said, listen, this woman has given more than these wealthy people who are piling loads of money into the temple treasury. Why? Because she didn't have anything. But instead of saying, I don't have anything, I have nothing to give, and she just kept on walking, she didn't act that way. She started with a small amount. You can bet that the Lord blessed her in days to come. And actually, if we don't start small, you may never wind up giving anything, actually. That's a proven, that's psychologically the case. Because when you start earning, if this is how the economy will go, if it bounces back and things get back and you can be earning, you know, 50, 70, 80, $100,000, do you think, do you think if you never gave anything, do you think you're going to be apt to all of a sudden come out with maybe $5,000 for charity or something? Well, that would be unheard of. But if it's done gradually, yeah, that will be an obvious thing to do. So prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. One more note now about the ashes. This year, as Mr. McGuire will explain, I'm sure you're, you're going to be having the ashes put on your head. Now, this is kind of like a return to the past I found out just the other day. I did not know. I thought it was always like this. And I thought, I didn't know how long we had Ash Wednesday. We've had it since about the 11th century. So somewhere in the 1000s. In the 11th century, apparently they were sprinkling the ashes on the head, maybe a larger quantity than you will receive. And it will be a sign that you are, you know, you're a sinner, but loved by God so much, he waits for us to turn back to him. And one more thing, everyone, the mercy of God is without limit. But people misunderstand mercy these days. They're thinking that mercy, well, how does a merciful God, when we get to his judgment seat, uh, it doesn't matter what I did, he'll automatically forgive me. God does forgive every sin, but we must acknowledge it and aim to turn away from it. See, this is what a lot of people are missing these days. And uh, so they get a false sense of security and peace. No, we have to turn from it to the best of our ability, even if it's a tough sin to beat and we have to turn from it a million times. The fact is there must be that and the mercy of God will never turn us away. And so I'm hoping and praying that your Lent will be a good one. I pray the same for Mr. McGuire and all of the staff in our, each of our three schools and uh, for myself, okay? And so thank you very much for your attention. God bless you this Lent and um, we'll see you all soon, I hope. Let us now pronounce a prayer of blessing over these ashes that you will be all receiving. O oh God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness by, to words of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am 
am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Oh, you say. Everything you think of me In you I find my worth In you I find my identity Oh, you say I am loved When I can't feel a thing And you say I am strong Every failure, God, you have every victory. Ooh, oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing, and you say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say. Let us now bring our prayers before the Lord. The response to our petitions is, Renew our hearts, O Lord. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, that we may help the lonely and forgotten among us this Lent by sharing our material goods and love with one another. We pray to the Lord. Renew our hearts, O Lord. Let us pray for our religious leaders. May their Lenten observances bring renewal of spirit and clarity of vision to their service of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Renew our hearts, O Lord. Let us pray for our political leaders. May their efforts towards finding global peace and justice be rooted in a change of heart that turns away from violence and seeks the good of the poor, the powerless, and defenselessness of our world. We pray to the Lord. Renew our hearts, O Lord. Let us pray for all who suffer due to a lack of justice in our world. May they find hope and comfort this Lenten season. We pray to the Lord. Renew our hearts, O Lord. 
Let us pray for ourselves that we might be strengthened to look past the doubts and fears which tempt us, and that we may live justly as God's people. We pray to the Lord. Renew our hearts, O Lord. Let us now pray confidently to the Father in the words the Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out a spirit of penitence, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and your neighbor. Thanks be to God.